question is, should it have come before the board? I believe that the advice that was received by the supervisor at that time was no, although that opinion seems to have changed. But the, I think the factual part that you have to look at is what would have been the difference? Here was a safety path on private property being used by the public and the easement had not been conveyed. It would never have been turned down by this board couldn't have been turned down. So it's really an issue of a ministerial act on the part of the supervisor. So that's the history of it. That's what happened. And it's a done deal. Now, we have an attorney opinion that says it's not a done deal. So I guess the chair will entertain a comment from Attorney Kelly relative to how to proceed from here. We have a motion then, before us to release the attorney-client privilege letter. Uh, generally, we've been counseled not to do so. And I take that counsel seriously. But all those in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed, opposed. 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 Two opposed, Gonser and Giangeli opposed, that's the board approved. Motion passes five to two to release the attorney-client privilege letter regarding this issue. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't remember why I signed it. I can only state that it certainly didn't come in a vacuum. Someone had to present it to me and indicate that it was appropriate to sign. But I don't remember the specifics of it. All due respect to Mr. Ferriolo, the document was not just put under the nose of the supervisor with no background. The supervisor was involved in conversations all through this period. And Mr. Kelly was in the office often I don't recall the conversations, but I am more than confident that we had conversations regarding this because I would not have signed it had I not been appropriately directed by legal counsel. So there are no emails to that effect, obviously, but it's obvious from the emails that I have cited that Mr. Kelly was aware of it, had been sent to him, and conversations had taken place that were not recorded. Certainly, a lot of work went into this. It happened over a period of uh, four or five months. This was not a surprise when it landed on my desk to sign. And in reference to the last comments that were made, I have no emails showing that Mr. Kelly received an email. There, so if uh, the resident who spoke has something, there's about 300 pages in here, and there's nothing in there that, that shows that Mr. Kelly was asked to review this. There's a side note that he wasn't even CC'd on, but, but this notion that somehow it was it was either reviewed and then sent to the supervisor or else not reviewed through a failure is not in this package. So I think it's important that that get across. And I As uh, Treasurer Langlois point, pointed out in all of the documents, the easement was never shown to be sent to my office. Now I say that, and I've pointed out in here that Elaine Levin says in an email that she's asked for my review. And I don't dispute that, quite frankly. Did I miss an email? It's possible. The fact of the matter is, though, none of the documents show an email where I was CC'd on or set the safety path easement for review. And I know from having searched my office that there was no legal review of the easement.
Now, there's two questions, the easement and the authority of the supervisor to sign a property um, interest. And I cite it in my opinion letter, really the only opinion other than the summary of the facts, and that is, is that the Charter Township Act is very clear that a board that accepts either by gift, purchase, or contribution, a property interest must do it by a board resolution. Now that's the only legal opinion provided in the letter, and that's what I was asked to do. And that is accurate in this case. We should have approved the acceptance of the easement by way of a board uh, resolution. But back then, when the supervisor was in the office every day, and the attorney was in the office many days, there were many, many verbal conversations regarding these subjects. So to suggest that this went forward with no counsel is simply, simply wrong. It's, it's a spurious argument. It simply has no weight. Now, should it have come before the board? If the township supervisor had been advised to bring it before the board, it would have come before the board. But the, obviously, the township supervisor was not so advised. The supervisor never said he was not advised. The supervisor said that in conversations he was not advised not to bring it to the board. So you're twisting words as usual, and I think most of the public can see that. But secondly, if you don't get a response from somebody, it's your responsibility to get one. Just because you don't get a response doesn't mean you're authorized to do something illegal, okay? And if you don't know, you got to check. And board action. 2004, it was up to the Planning Commission to acquire the easements and put them on, this, on the site plan. Oh. Oh. Here comes Mr. Carter. Complete you know, ignorance, I'm sure. Sorry, you mentioned Planning Commission. <laughs> planning Commission may pass along things to the board, but we're only recommending body for the board's approval. And we will put conditions on things, including legal conditions and easements and that sort of thing that have to be acquired. They're outside of the Planning Commission's control. This was not a Planning Commission issue, Supervisor Gonser. It was a board issue. Well... Easements weren't detailed for the board to consider, then the Planning Commission missed it. If the easements weren't detailed for the board to consider, the Planning Commission does not form easement language. It's not a Planning Commission issue to come up with the language for an easement, nor to attain an easement. We do not have the legal authority to do it, nor can we take any action. We are a recommending body, the board has the sole responsibility to take the action. We make recommendations. We make those recommendations with conditions, like the conditions of easements being obtained. If they're not attained, it's out of our control at that point. It's in the hands of the board. You're parsing words, and I don't disagree with your final statement, but the easement should be detailed on the site plan, if I'm correct. Which, which words did I parse? You parsed my words, suggesting that I said that it was the Planning Commission's responsibility to acquire the easement and to prepare the easement document. I did not say that. I didn't parse your words. I disagreed with them. Okay. Board action. 2004, it was up to the Planning Commission to acquire the easements and put them on, this, on the site plan. Oh. Oh. First of all, I, from what I can tell, and I wasn't there 10 years ago, and I don't have the documents, but I believe that the Planning Commission did its job, okay? The Planning Commission does not authorize or approve anything. They just put recommendations forward, and I believe that's what happened. And if all the details or facts weren't there, it's not up to the Planning Commission to get those. 
It should have been a responsibility of the board at that time to request those and make sure they had the right information. So. I have one more comment. Trustee Buxton, go ahead. I, the only comment that this is really bothering me, you made a statement that you had somehow had verbal conversations with the attorney and somehow he advised you against the, the law that we, he cites here to do something opposite of the law. Like you're making an accusation. I, I just can't let that stand. I don't believe that would be true. I don't believe that uh, Attorney Kelly would have advised you against going against the Charter Township Act and would have advised you to bring it to the board. I, I just think that's wrong. I'm sorry, that's well, my opinion. You're certainly welcome to your opinion. I think enough people in the office at the time knew me that I would not have ever signed something without proper guidance and authorization. 